today, September 28th, 2002. And I will not 20 years later than that. What was that? You said 2002? I said 2022. Oh. I'm so sorry. Okay, so 20, that's fine. I thought I said 2022. Okay, 2022. I'm select and, and I will not confirm that all members and persons participated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Yeah, huh? I am here in 2022. <laughs> John Hurd. Yes. Steve Corsi? Yes. Eric Thomas. I'm here in any year. Sam, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Sandy Gould? Here. Doc Hyde? Yep. Ashley Meyer? Yes. Tonight's meeting of the Toronto Select Board is being conducted in a hybrid format consistent with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, signed into law on July 17, 2022, which further extends certain COVID-19 measures regarding remote participation until March 20, I'm sorry, March 31st, 2023. Before we begin, please note the following. First, it's being conducted in the meeting recorded and it's also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Second, persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Third, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on Tom's website using the Novus Agenda platform. And finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. So let's see how much of the town's business we can get tonight. And now we'll move on to item number two on tonight's agenda, and that is an introduction of our new planning director. Um, and I'll turn that over to Sandy Pullen. Um Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are very lucky to have a new talented uh, and experienced director of, uh, of our planning department, uh, Claire Ricker. Um, she's here tonight uh, to say a few words and to answer any questions you have. Um, I'll, I'll let her talk a little bit about her experience, but she comes to us recently from Lowell uh, with a nonprofit, a, a community development corporation, before that with the city, uh, and before that, plenty of other experience. Uh, she and I met today for the first time at our regular meeting. Um, I think we're both excited about the things that the department is going to do and that she's going to lead us to do. So without uh, blabbing further, I think it's best to turn it over to Claire and let her introduce herself. Um, all right. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much, Manager. Thank you, um, board, for having me here tonight. Again, my name is Claire Ricker. I'm the new director of planning and community development here. I've been on the job about a week and a half. It has been a very busy week and a half, um, and just a, a lot of information um, to take in, um, and you know, obviously the day-to-day -day operations of the town, so I've been working a lot with the extraordinarily talented staff downstairs. They have been really wonderful, and everybody in the town has given me such a warm welcome. I've already connected with a few members of the community um, who've reached out and uh, welcomed me to Arlington as well. Um, it's been um, just, just very warm welcome. Um, you know, everybody uh, so far <laughs> has been uh, uh, really nice and very supportive. Um, I know, you know, that it has been, uh, it's, I'm, I'm, that said, it's clear to me that Arlington is a community that is thoughtful, engaged, passionate. Um, I'm excited to bring my experience and skills here to help the community meet their um, planning and development goals and aspirations. Um, I would Coming to you from the city of Lowell, the last two and a half years, I was a real estate director for a uh, community development corporation. Um, it was a little hectic during the pandemic. We still managed to cut the ribbon on 44 units of veterans preference housing in Haverhill, nine units of veterans preference housing in Dracut, and then break ground on a 27 unit uh, property in the city of Lowell. Um, I don't know if anybody here is a fan of this old house, but my Drakeit project was featured, um, you know, this, uh, in, this, in their last season. Um, thank you. Um, the town of Drakeit actually gave the Coalition for a Better Acre a schoolhouse that we used and did a beautiful, beautiful um, historic restoration, restoration. Prior to that, I was with the city of Lowell. Um, I started there as their urban renewal project manager and moved to be the chief design planner. Um, I managed... Um, 
uh, development and design a lot of infrastructure projects. We've a, built a $40 million parking garage, almost 900 spaces. I managed that project. We did a reconfiguration and a redesign of the Lord Overpass, which was a massive um, vehicle oriented piece of infrastructure, a couple of bridges. We, we called it the big fill. We brought it all to grade and were able to do um, a separated bus lane. Uh, we had so much right of way we were able to do that. That was another wonderful, wonderful project, I think, in the city of Lowell. Um, prior to that, I was with the city of Holyoke, which was out in Western um, Mass, uh, you know, obviously with its own challenges. Um, it was a great, great learning experience. I mean, essentially, uh, what I heard was, um, if you see something you want to do, write a grant and get it done. So we did. <laughs> that was really sort of the, the mandate there. Um, and I was able to do um, uh, uh, hazardous materials and um, uh, asbestos remediation in one of the mills, um, leading to uh, the Wynn uh, Development Corporation, then went out to Holyoke and built the first housing, um, uh, the first housing, pro the first mill housing uh, project in Holyoke. We didn't even have any um, restored mills. Now in Lowell, we're out of mills. They have just developed their last one. And so that is really the culmination of 50 years of planning. Um, it's slow, it's slow work, but very fulfilling, um, especially with a, with a community that's, that's committed to it, such as I've seen in Arlington so far. So um, we've got a lot of work to do, and I think, um, I think we're gonna get it done. I think we're really gonna um, be able to put together um, to deliver some really good projects. Um, you know, and as well as, um, um, you know, as well as establishing good programs um, and, you know, like I said, meeting the goals uh, that are so clearly laid out in the planning documents. Great. Oh, very impressive so far. <laughs> so, so I'm just going to go down the line because I'm assuming that everyone's going to want to say something. And so I'm going to start with Mr. Hurd. Well, welcome. Um, when we receive your information, that for that position, definitely impressed with your resume and your qualifications and how those mesh into the planning directives that we have in Arlington. And, you know, I'm sure you've seen so far if you've done some research in, in your first week, you get a lot of uh, a lot of requests and a lot of discussions about affordable housing in Arlington. Mm -hmm. That's been something that we've struggled with over the past couple of years, but it's something that both from a talent perspective and resident perspective, a lot of discussions have been had. And it sounds like you, that's right up your alley. So we're looking forward to having some discussions with you, me and town staff, and seeing how we can use your experience and roll with some of the efforts that we've had the past couple of years to try to identify affordable housing. It's a tough needle to thread in Arlington, but um, you know, I, that's what we've been working on for the past couple of years and the best strategies to do that. And again, I think your experience really touches on that and among other things, <laughs> the, all the many things that the planning department does. Yeah. But welcome. Thank you. Ellen? Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. When we were speaking briefly before the meeting, I was really touched by something you said, which was that you missed municipal government. So welcome back. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I think that we are blessed to have senior leaders and, and, and all so many employees in town who really have a passion for this work. Uh, people don't do it for the money. They don't do it for everyone to be next to them every single minute of, of the day. <laughs> um, but they do it because they welcome tough questions. They welcome creative challenges. And we have a lot of those. Um, in addition to housing, which my colleague just ably uh, said, I think that economic development is another really big and exciting challenge that we have. And it's ripe for really creative people. Uh, we are Thrilled to have you for that reason. Thrilled to have a really strong team that, that you're, that's here in place for you to lead and to work with. And I can't wait to see what happens next. Thank you. Mr. Morsey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I also want to echo my colleagues' comments and, and welcome you to Arlington. And, and you mentioned your experience in Lowell and Holyoke. I was impressed you also had experience in Cambridge, experience in Newton, and, and you bring all of those experiences to, to the job here. We're really excited to have you. And I will say, I've been in two conversations this week with, with individuals outside of town who had heard you came to Arlington and they spoke very highly of you. And that is really wonderful to hear. And yeah. we're really excited to have you and look forward to working with you. Yeah, well, that's great to hear. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Welcome again. I'm Thanks. very excited. As you said, you have an exemplary staff down in the planning department. Okay, great. Arlington's very, very fortunate to that, and 
thankfully, you know, thank the town manager for hiring the planning director. That's definitely right up there. Uh, same high bar. Um, same thing as Mr. DeCourcy. I didn't get to speak to Lou, but I spoke to two or three other people um, who had very um, stellar things to say about you. Mm -hmm. So, which um, uh, yeah, that would have mattered anyways, but it certainly was. And as I said to you earlier, the nine years journeyman, journey person, yep. uh, plays in there. That's right. um, and just sort of echoing um, what my colleagues have said, definitely affordable housing. I know you've already gotten a sense for that. Um, CDBG Opera uh, yep. is very heavily enmeshed in that. One of the things I think we'll be looking for is going through what we have done because of opera funding, knowing that that money's coming to an end, mm -hmm. um, and how we augment that or correctly finish and, and, and phase it out. Sure. Um, and then the other thing that um, we're all definitely concerned about, which nobody's gonna make a huge dent in, which I understand, but it's more of a demonstration, is um, economic development. I really think Broadway, the industrial zone for years, every town manager we've had, I've said, you know, can we get a planning director that maybe has relationships with flag companies? We've now moved forward in terms of our workforce with you know, work bar and you know, shared office space and, and things like that. Um, and like I said, we're not gonna be able to do like our adjacent neighbors like a Belmont, Burlington, Cambridge um, and be able to get that much more business revenue. But it's something that um, definitely, um, I know the citizens and other businesses um, always look toward. I don't know if you have any thoughts on anything that I, and I also want to let you know Frank Callahan, Arlington resident, president of the building trades, he's on the permanent town building committee, he's yeah. been instrumental with the other members of, we have a fantastic permanent town building committee in terms of free expertise that we couldn't afford, but that's definitely someone, you know, you should keep in your back pocket um, because he's a good resource. But I don't know if you have anything you, or if, if you want to hear from the ch chairman first and then comment. So welcome. Oh, I'm going to have you Okay. Sure. Um, so we're, we need to make a very key hire um, in this department, which would be the economic development coordinator. Um, I think, you know, I reached out to HR today. We have a few applicants. Um, I'd like to see more applicants. Um, if possible, we could keep um, that listing open a little longer. Um, I'd like to get it out um, in a few more places. Um, because I do think that we do need a good, robust process to get the right person in here to do the kind of economic development that, that the town is looking to do. Um, I am interested um, in economic development. Certainly I've had experience as an affordable housing de um, developer, but I've also had quite a bit of experience of um, disposition of public property to private developers, um, assisting um, private developers in getting you know, any land um, issues cleared up. Um, in terms of transfer, you know, to transfer them public property or any easement issues or things like that. Um, that was part of my job when I worked, uh, when I worked in Lowell. Um, we really focused a lot on Lowell's sort of, you know, primary development area. They had kind of, I would call it the luxury of a big vacant um, spot as well. They did some master planning there, form-based code, and it was really um, part of my job to sell the district. Um, to say, hey, you know, we have these great parcels, we've set the table, we've done a lot of site work here, who can we get in here that's going to do, that's, that's going to provide a use um, that the city is looking for. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a challenge, I think it's going to be a little bit of a challenge in, in Arlington. Arlington is a streetcar suburb. It's always, you know, sort of even historically been based around residential, even residential business um, to some extent. Um, I think that said, we, we really need to get out there and see what's available. The pandemic has kind of cleared the table um, and, it's, and it's time to get down, you know, to, to start to look at some of these storefronts, start to look at some of the, um, you know, uh, you know some, some entrepreneurs. I think we need to, I don't want to get too specific, but I think we should talk to some more, you know, breweries and then things like that. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of work um, that can be done there and I'm certainly definitely excited about it. Um, getting out more in the community. I've already met with um, Beth Locke, who's the head of the, the chamber, um, and she's uh, talked a bit about, you know, the, the 250 year, the, you know, the, it's called the semi-quincentennial, I practiced, 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, she said, "Hey, why? You know, let's do something with that. I mean, what is this Arlington, Lexington, Concord? I mean, we are right in there. So I think that's an opportunity that we shouldn't miss or shouldn't um, let us pass by. And you know, certainly there's a lot of uh, other great, great ideas and creative suggestions um, in the planning documents. But I agree, it should be absolutely a focus." Excellent. I know Mr. Hurd's ears perked up when he heard the semi quincentennial. I just say that word a few times. Yeah. <laughs> now we just call it the 2025. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And we'll, we'll, have, we'll talk again we'll talk. in the future. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Yes, Thank you. yes, indeed. Welcome. And one of those plans is the Connect Arlington plan. And I'm very much interested in that because I'm pretty much the transportation guy. Mm -hmm. and I'm on the, the board with my history with the committee right over the Foresight like Committee. I'm also on the Boston Region Metropolitan Plan Organization. And so, as you probably know, transportation is the key. You know, I mean, it will determine the kind of development you have, I mean, both business wise, I mean, and kind of, I mean, the kind of residential area you have, whether it's really geared towards single occupancy vehicles or, or transit. I mean, and so, we've been waiting you know, for, for our new planning director so that we can try to make some progress yeah. um, with that plan and certainly have some ideas. And this is a town that has lots of ideas. I mean, um, and you'll quickly find out I mean, that there are, are, are lots of people with lots of ideas. And mm -hmm. one of the things we're pushing with the civic engagement group is that we really have so much staff. I mean, and, and so I mean, I mean, you can bring ideas I mean, and dump them, or you can try to make those <coughs> ideas happen. And by that, I mean, I mean think of how to do the pilots. I mean, just think of what you can do I mean, for staff I mean, in conjunction with staff so that you're not really taking a lot of staff's time but also in trying to move forward the exploration of the idea. And one of the ideas that has had some movement um, is the uh, development of the Broadway Corridor. And there was a contest called the Broadway Design, Broadway Corridor Design Contest. I mean, and, and it generated some interesting ideas. And, and, and uh, there's a recording of the contest itself on ACMI. And I'll break a little news here and say we're going to do a forum on that on the 1st of November. The time hasn't been decided yet to use 7.30 8. I'm um, 7.30, 8 o'clock, and, uh, and, and uh, so far it seemed like at the town day, and there's lots of interest in it, and, and so uh, we'll see what comes up there, but at least me, that, that was a project that originated as an article, and it was really a resolution, and a uh, town meeting voted on it, and, and we wanted to move forward on it, but this was just a limitation of what staff could do at the time, and, uh, and so uh, the civic engagement group decided to push forward with it, and, and the contest happened, and I think we have some interesting results as, as, a, as, a, as a consequence, a good consequence. Uh, hearing you talk about things just really makes me want to see your CV. You know, and so I don't know if I missed it, but if you have something you want to pass along, because it will be interesting to see what other things you have done, because I'm sure what you told us is just a fraction of <laughs> what you've done. And so yeah, that may generate some ideas. We can certainly give us some ideas of things that you are passionate about, or at least very knowledgeable about, and, and, and can, can work with us. So I'm going to be a little interactive I mean, um, and, and, and maybe put you on the spot a little bit. You know? So based on what you've done I and mean, what you know about Arlington so far, I mean, what would you say is something that we could stand to do? I mean, uh, and even if you want to go beyond that, and based on um, what you may want to do, it's like, um, what is it you think that you know, we can stand to do? And if you don't want to answer that now, we can come back to this another time. No, no, I think, you know, one of the things I, so when I was preparing for the interviews, which was a fantastic process, by the way, very, very rigorous, um, I was going through the plans, including Connect Arlington, and I noticed um, very, not, not hidden necessarily, but certainly I think should have been more celebrated was the reduction in single occupancy trips in vehicles. Significant, like almost 10%. I think this is something that Arlington could really hang their hat on if you were to get below, say 60, say 50. What an accomplishment that would be to get people out of their cars. Um, I, I, that was, you should be commended. <laughs> Absolutely on that. I think that there's a willingness here um, you know, to engage in, in something like that. Hey, let's get out of our cars and, and you know, do some bikes, do some walking. Not Chris, but, <laughs> but you know, um, you know, certainly, you know, some of the some of the folks here. Um, my initial impressions are that there are there's better coordination, or some excuse me, I think some more coordination could be done um, between planning and city departments. I would like to have any plans, proposals, project proposals. 
um, reviewed internally, I think, by more departments before they go to the redevelopment board um, or even the ZBA. Um, I think there is a lot of comment, there's a lot of work that could be done on those even before they go to um, a board so that we don't end up with someone proposing a project and then having to redesign based on stormwater or something like that. We'll get that you know, over to engineering before. Um, so those are really like, kind of my first two um, ideas. Uh, you know, the, sing the single occupancy vehicle reduction of trips is, a, I think, is an excellent goal. Um, and then for me internally, um, how do we do project review and how do we, um, you know, how do we deliver um, to the boards um, who are, you know, volunteering their time, how do we deliver a more complete project presentation that's been, you know, viewed and vetted by more departments. So. Thank you very much. Sure. So, so I'll, I'll just start. So, well, welcome board. Really Thank you. Board to Thank you. And, and could I just ask sure. either Ms. Ricker or the town manager, I think there's um, something coming up if people want to sort of have a meet and greet with you. And yes. I'm blanking oh. on the date and time. Well, it's, it's tomorrow. tomorrow. It's tomorrow at 5. Yeah. I yeah. believe it's on the first floor conference room. I'm not sure. I think it's in the lines here. It's, it's, it's in the building. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it's I believe it's in the lions room, but. Yeah. Uh, There'll be signs. I can tell you it is. <laughs> All right. I remember reading that. Yeah. Okay. Thank Tomorrow you. evening, 5 p.m. I'm looking forward to that too. Right. So thank you. Great. Right. Thank you. Thanks for the reminder. Uh, so, so we will now move on to item number three, the end of the year budget report with the town manager and the controller. So, Mr. Manager. Um, we will have Ida Cody, uh, the town's controller, present this. Uh, it used to be that she and I would share presenting, but um, once I became manager, I told her that she had to do all the work, so that's what she's doing. <laughs> uh, and she'll do an excellent job. Uh, we have talked about the fact that the board's read everything, so I think I'll be short and to the point, and then if you have questions, Ida or I will be glad to answer. So, so this is Cody. Thank you for joining Good us. Good evening, Ida. Good evening, Ida Cody, Town con Controller. Um, I will present the year to date um, budget report tonight. Um, this is actually uh, has a summary of revenue and expenditures for fiscal year 22, which ended on 6 30, 2022. Um, this is actually perfect timing for this, for this presentation because last week DOR certified our free cash. So these are final numbers, no more entries. Um, the report, actually the narrative part is um, very light, but it's packed with very useful information. Um, I will try to give you the, just the essence of this 46 pages of numbers and percentages, and hopefully you'll find them useful. So as I said, free, uh, DOR certified free cash last week in the amount of 15 million, 912, 078. This is an increase of $4.8 million over last year's um, free cash. And this increase is um, um, as the combination of revenue surplus and appropriation turnbacks. We had a uh, revenue surplus in fiscal year 22 in the amount of uh, approximately $4.5 million. And the appropriation turnbacks were $3.3 million. Um, we can, if you would like, we can jump to the tables actually. Right, so these are the um, expenditures. Uh, like I said, we turned back $3.3 .3 million. Um, almost all departments spent their uh, budgets at 90, between 97 and 99%. There are a few that turned back some funds, mostly in salaries because we had vacancies caused by um, either retirement or resignations, and the new people were hired at the, of a lower um, rate. Um, everything else is where it's supposed to be. Um, I will just focus a little bit on the reserve fund. On the reserve fund, we had um, budgeted $1.7 million, and we had to do just two transfers this year, $10,000, it's actually on the other page, at the top yes so we had we only uh, needed to do two transfers this year ten thousand dollars for the town managers buyback 
and also $200,000 to the fire department for, um, to cover the overtime. Um, we didn't have to transfer any money to DBW for snow and ice, as the snow and ice budget was only over um, approximately $11,000, and the DBW had sufficient funds to cover this deficit. Um, we did transfer $1 million uh, from this, uh, uh, the reserve fund that was um, an item that was reserved for the school department. We transferred it to the override stabilization fund, and that one was authorized um, in spring at the uh, special town meeting. Um, next page, we have the articles. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because as you know, this warrant articles, departments have two years to spend the appropriation. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a, at a certain percentage. So they are within their budget uh, and we only, we pay the bills as we get them. And we can move on to the general fund revenue because this is uh, more exciting. Uh, we actually turned back, we actually had a surplus of $4.5 million. In the, the report itself, um, I did cover some uh, in detail some of the categories, but for the purposes of this presentation, I'm just gonna focus on uh, a few big items. Um, the first one is uh, the miscellaneous non-recurring um, accounts and we got here 1.2 million dollars this is an account that we don't uh, make an estimate for we don't make a projection because we never know what we're going to get this is usually a one-time reimbursement either from prior years from various vendors or um, a federal or a state one-time reimbursement the next one that's large is uh, the motor vehicle excise. We've exceeded the uh, um, projection by $1.5 million. And this is because of a combination of the timing of commitment and um, the economic um, rebound. We also lowered this estimate by uh, $575,000. Um, so, um, like I said, this the, this category does have some um, commitments from fiscal year 21, which were posted in 21, 22 and collected this fiscal year. The next large item is the permits and licenses, which here we um, overall we um, exceeded the projection by $1.5 million. But it's important to note that the main driver of this category is the building and wire permits. Uh, we had a really good year with a record collection of $2.8 million. Um, and this is from both uh, new constructions and also renovations. We had some large renovations. Um, one of them, for example, was a million dollars. And we had a few of 600, 500 dollars, 600,000 600, and 500,000 um, dollars. And now we get to the proverbial happy topic the excise taxes uh the hotel motel and marijuana hotel was um uh, uh, we um exceeded the um projection by two hundred thousand dollars but we're still not at the levels that we were pre-covid um the meals we had a record of five hundred thousand dollars and um, this is a record and it's a lot more than we've, collect we've been collecting pre-COVID. And uh, marijuana, it's over, um, we had a surplus of $100,000, although we, we increased the, the projection, we still got more. Um, one more a large item is the school Medicaid, which appears to be at 439% collection, but it's, again, this is the timing and it's because the, um, the consultant that does the billing for the school department uh, sent the, uh, the, um, the reimbursement, but we didn't get it till 2022. So it was, it, it became part of this, year, this year's free cash. And the last one that I want to mention is the state aid. Uh, the state got a lot of money and they uh, actually spread the surplus that they gave us in um, uh, a total of uh, $200,000, 40000 for the veterans, 70000 in homeless transportation, and tuition reimbursement, $80,000. So 
So all this contributed to um, a good free cash. Um, and if you have, if you don't have any questions, or if you want to save them for later, I can move on to the enterprise funds, which are on the next page. I would say let's just go on and, and finish the, the report, and we'll just go down the line for questions and comments. Okay. So so the enterprise funds are uh, pretty straightforward. Nothing really, nothing much to discuss here. Um, you have all the retained earnings listed on the report. Um, AYCC, RINC, and REC uh, uh, reported surplus revenues, and that's because they've been ex uh, experiencing uh, an increase in their the demand for the services. Water and sewer had a revenue shortfall, but that's because we had a wet summer last year. However, we spoke with the DPW director and we will have a large commitment and we will see good, a good collection um, this fall because this, this summer was um, dry. Um, and the Council on Aging has, had also a revenue shortfall of 22,000, but they also turned back $16,000. So that didn't really have a, a large impact on the retained earnings. And that concludes my report. Great, great, Rizzo. Less spending and more revenue. Summed up with that as a good year, you know, but, but of course we are gonna be questions and comments. So once again, we're gonna go, I see, I was gonna go down the line, but you, you put your hand up. Oh, hard, so. <laughs> Move receipt. Then I only have one question. <laughs> what is school Medicaid? I don't think I've seen that term before. Um, this is the reimbursement that you get from the federal government for um, services that are offered to the mostly to the students with special ed, such as speech therapy, um, nutrition, the direct services that we offer them to the students, and the federal government puts aside some funds and they distribute them based on what we report and eligible. And so with. Is the collection because we weren't billing, could we hire a consultant to help us out and we weren't billing timely in prior years and we're recovering for prior years? Or is it? There, there, this I could it. There, there was some issue of timing. Um, so it was higher this last year than it normally would be. It was lower the previous year than it normally would be. I think it will flatten out, but it all had to do, I think, with the timing of uh, our through our consultant filing reimbursement requests. Um, so. Well, it sounds like the consultant has earned their fee. Thank you. Second. Um, just want to say um, I, I want to thank Ms. Cody and um, our town manager in this for, former iteration as deputy town manager and chief financial officer role um, that uh, when we initially started getting these reports, um, I know when I first got on the board, it was something that I requested for a long time. And, um, and then they started coming in and getting fine tuned. And um, every request that I've had along the way over the years certainly has been incorporated and has made it much easier for, I, for myself to um, look at these and be able to understand them. So, so I do appreciate uh, Mr. Pooler and Ms. Cody for um, going the extra steps for all of us, not just myself. I know my colleagues also have comments along the years on, on how this is done. Um, and one of the ease of, of this report is able to not only get the um, summary that we did from uh, Ms. Cody, but looking at it ourselves, like AYCC and, and the Recreation Department, that's really exciting that, you know, there's sort of st starting to rebound, um, uh, not for the money aspect of it, but for the program aspect of it. The money's good too, but, um, but I, I definitely um, stand by the, the program aspect. Um, and I do see that our, I think it was our investments were at about 130%. Um, is that uh, as a result of the treasurer's office or is that the comptroller or a combination thereof? Well, the, uh, it, it is because uh, towards the end of the year, the uh, interest rates went up a little, and that helped with the uh, with the um, final revenue numbers. But we've also had um, conservative 
estimate to begin with, and that's why it, it, it looks like we've collected a lot more. Okay. That, that is within the purview of the treasurer. Okay. And one sort of obscure, um, which I don't even know if it's a fund anymore, but for, for many, many years, and I know that um, the previous town manager uh, came up with a model around the municipal building trust fund uh, because that had such a large amount of money for so long that really was kind of stagnant in my opinion. Um, is that something that's still in play or did the previous town manager and previous board come up with um, a, a framework that that's no longer really something to look towards? Um, that does still exist. You will see uh, when we put out the report for the Long Range Planning Committee on Friday, at the bottom of that sheet, we always list how much is in that fund. It's, I'm going to say it's about $700,000 now. We do keep it uh, in case we have a claim for a loss on one of our buildings that uh, exceeds, that we have to pay a deductible on, uh, and that our insurance won't cover all of it. Mostly we have not had really big claims that way, so we've just sort of kept it as a reserve in case. Um, and uh, I think the last time we used it was three or four years ago. I think there was some flooding to the high school, but that was about it. Mostly we, we just let it sit there. Just a quick question on that. Is that A, in here and I missed it, B, in here and it's incorporated somewhere else, or C, not in here, and if that's the case, could it be added? Um, so this, it, it's see not in here. Okay. Uh, good. I was just saying, did I fall asleep and miss it? Okay. Uh, what this report has to date focused on is our our revenue and our expenditures. Uh, we could we could add a separate report, particularly at the end of the year. I think it would be useful to show fund balances for how our funds go up and down. Um, and I think again for an end of the year report, that would be the appropriate time because that's that's when we calculate all those things. The revenue and expenditures we do every quarter, the fund balances, like the one you're talking about, will calculate at the end of the year. Okay. And so this is the end of the year report for 2022. So just moving forward, yep. we can do that. I don't need that because you just gave us a report on it, but if that could be incorporated for next year's end of the year report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I can, I can also give you the balance uh, for this fund. It's 661, uh, 661.854. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, Ms. Cody, for the presentation uh, this evening and, and for the detailed memo. And, and I'm just going to repeat something that you put in the memo um, regarding expenses. All departments stayed within their budgets. And that's something that uh, I think townspeople will like to hear in, in the, uh, you know, the, the monitoring and in the uh, diligent work of our department heads and, and yourself and, and, and Mr. Pooler. So thank you for that. Um, just a question on page five under general fund revenue, the property tax line and um, the amount received at 141.7 million is, is about 1.2 million less than what was budgeted. And I imagine it might be exemptions, there might be some abatements in there. Are there any receivable issues that, that are, are hanging out there for property taxes, or is that um, just some, some other factors that show this difference? No, we actually have an excellent record of tax collection here in Arlington. I've worked in other municipalities, and I'm actually impressed that every year we are at 98 to 99%. That this is, this is excellent, 99%. It, it's a timing. We will be getting this money. Uh, we don't have um, um, any issues with the receivables. We usually collect them in time. And whatever we have that's not being paid, the treasurer will put in tax title and soon, sooner or later we get it. But for the most part, we really haven't had any issues with the tax collection, Great. even during Thank COVID. You. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so it was glad to see that the free cash was higher than expected. How much higher than is it was it that we expected it to be? If I could, um, in the last couple of years, we've had about eleven million dollars in free cash. So uh, it was about four plus million dollars greater. There were some one-time events that I think 
we can't count on going forward. Part of it, is, as Ms. Cody said, was the timing of our receipt of our motor vehicle excise taxes, uh, which had to do a lot with the timing of when we got bills from the Registry of Motor Vehicles and could send them out for FY21 and FY22. And so when they came, we basically got a little bit of 21's money in 22. So uh, I don't expect to see that as high again. The other uh, significant issue was licenses and permits. Uh, I do think that Mike Champa has been doing an excellent job collecting those and verifying that the costs of building here is in fact what uh, people should be paying. He's requiring affidavits from contractors. Uh, I am a little nervous about that going forward only because as interest rates go up, you're likely to see some slowdown in both home sales and in renovation projects. So uh, a, a nice bump for us, but we'll be keeping an eye on that. And then I think the third thing that we are not likely to see again is um, those non-recurring uh, revenues which really had to do with our getting reimbursements from, from the Fed um, through the CARES Act. And it's just the timing of things that we had spent and then the timing of the federal money coming into us, that's not going to recur. So I think in going forward, it's likely to be that our regular amount is going to be back toward that 11 million figure. Um, Edith, is there anything you want to add on that? No, these are the main areas which um, we're not, most likely we're not going to see in the future. Especially if the non recurrent was a big one, was $1.2 million, so we cannot rely on that. Thank you. Does this, um, and then some of this is timing issues, does that additional free cash have more than a marginal effect on our long range plan for projected deficits and You'll see that Friday. <laughs> uh, we're presenting. Uh, I'm happy to defer that. <laughs> uh, Always keep them wanting more. That's what I say to people. <laughs> it has had some effect. Uh, we are still working on final numbers. Uh, we're waiting for just some things to come in to present on Friday, and we will be able to talk about that right away. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Thank you. And actually, you answered my question with um, what you said about Mike and the fees made up for, for uh, building and, and uh, enhancements. So, so I, um, yeah, I'm pretty much, I'm, I'm happy with what I see it. And I'm going to ask three kind of general questions, uh, which do not have to be answered now. Maybe it'll be better to ask, ask them, answer them, maybe when we do the first quarter report or as we get prepared to do the budget. These come to you uh, by means of, uh, well, she's not a colleague, but she's actually on um, the select board in, in Brookline, and we talk about <laughs> things at times. We just um, understand how things are going on in our towns. It'll be interesting to see how we you know, maybe answer these questions year to year, you know, and certainly how we may compare uh, to, to Brookline. So the three questions are, what have you seen as the biggest challenges you know, uh, with respect to financing the town you know, and budgeting? You know, what have been, you think, the, the biggest accomplishments being of the town in the last uh, two years with respect to our finances being in? And um, I know this was a little pie to sky, but maybe not an unlimited budget, but certainly a bigger budget. I mean, what do you think the town we could maybe do? If we had a, 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 the potential of a larger budget, significantly larger budget, I mean, what is it that we could do that you would think would be very helpful? Uh, to the town, so so like I said, these are three three questions that should come out now. I don't really expect an answer to them now. If you want to play with them, fine. But if not, let's let's maybe talk uh, about them. Yeah, I, I, I will, I'll give um, a couple of very quick answers to your questions, and I think these are conversations, particularly as we look at the potential for an override that we'll be discussing a lot. Um, I think our strengths has been, as uh, I think Ida indicated. We have very strong financial departments. Uh, we have an excellent comptroller, an excellent treasurer, and an excellent assessor. They really do a good job. We do an excellent job of collecting the, the money uh, that we're owed. So I think, and the town has been that way for a long time, and there's a strong track record. So I think the residents can feel confident that the people who are looking after their money are doing a good job. Uh, 
We are continuing to move forward to try to automate things, put things online. We're uh, in the process of looking at an online permit system so that people can apply for building permits and other things online, which I think will speed things up and make it easier for contractors and so forth. Uh, so we're, uh, I think there's a long history and we're continuing those in terms of, of being modern and, and efficient. Um, I think, did you ask about shortcomings? Um, I can't really think of any now, so, um, be, I mean, to be, I, I don't mean to be glib, but um, uh, I think, I will say there's been some challenges we've had with some of our software and what some of our vendors uh, that has, for example, we've had trouble connecting with the registry of motor vehicles to mark people who are late in paying their tickets and so forth. That's been a big struggle for the treasurer's office. We're continuing to try to get it resolved. And over time, I think we will see an increase in our ticket revenue on these sheets if we can get that resolved. But it's, it's been a difficult issue. Um, and, um, and finally, I, I remember I had lunch with a new town manager from Watertown the other day. Uh, and he was telling me that they regularly have five million dollars in free cash, in, in, excuse me, in new growth every year. We're lucky if we hit a, a million. That's just the difference in the kind of community we are. And so I think over the long run, making sure that we continue to do the kind of things that Claire Rickers was talking about, developing our commercial corridors, uh, hopefully we can increase those. Uh, but we are just a very residential community, and that is fundamental to why we have uh, a structural deficit in our budget, and right. we'll continue to work on right. that. And there were challenges, I mean, so, so, uh, so thank you very much, Mead. And with that, a motion to receive by Mr. Hurd, and a second by Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Hurd? Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Thank you. And so, well, now, and thank you, Ms. Cody. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Well, now we move on to the consent agenda on it. We have the minutes of meetings, August 3rd, 2022, goal setting meeting, August 22nd, 2022, and September 12th, 2022. We also have, well, I guess, we have to a vote uh, authorizing police detail for November 8th, 2022 uh, by Julie Brazil, town clerk. And number six, a vote to receive study of the town office of the town clerk and by Julie Brazil, town clerk. And seven, request a permit for Veterans Day Parade Friday, November 11th by Jeff Chungle, Director of Veterans Services. And number eight, a reappointment term to expire on June 30th, 2025 by the LGBTQIA plus Rainbow Commission, Andy Rubinson. So, uh, with approval, approval. Second. And so with the motion to approve by Ms. Mahan and a second by Mr. Hurd. Mr. Hine? Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Mr. Hine? Yes. Mrs. Vaughn? Yes, thank you. Mr. Diggins? Yes. And I'll just say on uh, item number seven, I mean, I'm number six, I mean the well, to receive the study of the office of the town clerk. There will be a lot more discussion about that um, after the election. The town clerk just wanted to get the report out to residents the, uh, sooner rather than later since she had received the report. And, and so, so uh, more to come. And, just, yes. Um, and you, this may already have been um, completed um, for number seven on the Veterans Day Parade. Um, as you know, traditionally the chair gives the remarks um, and the chair coordinates with our veterans director, Jeff Chunglo, because he does do a really nice program. So if you haven't, um, going forward, if you could let him know um, which person to list to make the remarks on behalf of the board. Sure. Traditionally, it's the chair. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Yeah. So, uh, <coughs> Excuse so me. Next, we have an appointment to the LGBTQIA plus Rainbow Commission term to expire on June 30th, 2025. Paloma Cotton Herman, is Ms. Is Paloma here? Hi there, yes. Okay, hi. How are you doing? 
to see it. You know, so uh, do you want to say a few words? Yes, hi, it's uh, wonderful to be here. My name is Paloma Cotton Herman. I use she, her, hers pronouns. And um, my wife and two daughters and I are closing in on a year of living in Arlington. We're so glad to be here. And I was just, um, I was at my local coffee shop and saw that the LGBTQIA plus commission was looking for uh, commissioners. And I'm always one to want to sort of put down roots and invest in my community. And I was just very excited about the possibility and um, attended town day with the commission and um, I've just been really excited about the momentum and the leadership in the commission and given my background in DE&I and as an educator and as you know part of the LGBT community I just thought what a wonderful way to um, serve the community and get to know folks and continue to build community here so it's wonderful um, to have that opportunity. Thank you very much and so I'll turn to my colleagues Mr. Helmut. I'd very much like to move approval. Uh, welcome to Arlington. We are thrilled that you and your family are here. And it is always a special joy when a new resident dives in to get involved. I think you will find it rewarding. The other members of the commission, I was thrilled to, uh, to reappoint Mr. Rubinson and our consent agenda just now. He has uh, been an important part of that commission's leadership, as have so many others. Um, I think you have a great time and I look forward to hearing the next great things that you do. Thank you. And, uh, Mr. Hart? We'll second that motion and just say welcome. We rely heavily on a lot of our boards and commissions and this one certainly is, we, we rely on this commission to do a lot in town and is very active. Um, so thank you for your willingness to give your time. Thank you. Mr. Hart? Um, welcome to you and your family. Um, thrilled to have you here in Arlington. I just sort of want to put a plug in. Um, one of our previous colleagues, Dan Dunn, um, this was sort of his ballywick um, uh, with this committee, and it's sort of fallen by the wayside. And looking at your, uh, your resume, it seems like you may have something that can at least uh, evaluate the program to see if it's something that should be sort of continue to re-implement it, but really getting our young people um, yes. in, involved with the committee. We also have, um, which Mr. Dunn uh, sort of extended a, a, an association with, it's, um, the, it's a Mystic Valley group um, that incorporates Arlington and other cities and towns for, for our young people, um, middle school, high school, um, that they have events. and. Um, just sort of taking advantage, my apologies, of your background in education and also dealing sort of with that clientele, um, yeah, with yeah. that age group. Um, I'd be interested, and you don't have to answer this tonight, but if it, is that something that perhaps you could, could sort of take a look at and a pass and see where we are with it? Absolutely. And we've, I've spoken just initially with Susan and Lisa, the co-chairs, around like sort of where do you see areas of interest and sort of like education, you know, just seems like a really natural connection. Also, my daughters are four years old and eight months, so sort of a God year. God bless you. I, you know, I, yes. <laughs> or anyone, <laughs> whoever bless you. Sorry. But just sort of heading into that K-5 space, we're going to be at the Dallin School, so just being excited about sort of newly entering the school system here. A lot of questions, a lot of excitement there, so absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just, I just want to thank you for your willingness to serve uh, and, and welcome to Arlington. And uh, we've had a good experience so far. And uh, I, I know you'll uh, add a lot to the uh, Rainbow Commission. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And I've had a chance to meet you at one of the, the um, Rainbow Commission meetings. So you already showing that you're a great in addition to, to the group being in. Nice thing about going last is that they've said it all. And, uh, and, and I'll, I'll just also. Um, at that we, there is going to be the picnic on Saturday. And, uh, yes. And um, it's going to be at Robbins Farm Park, right? Yes, yes. noon to two this coming uh, October 1st. Absolutely, we'll be there. So. Great, great. So so on a motion by Mr. Helmuth and a second by Mr. Hurd to approve the appointment. Mr. Hunt. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Looking forward to it. So we now move on to open forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall 
neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or a request. Anyone else? Yes, we do have plenty of things. Right. Two minutes, please. Cool. Um, we'll just take the, the list and then give it a few more seconds and then lock it down. So this time we're going to try and get that clock inside the Zoom window. <laughs> Got it? I'm not seeing it. It's Mr. Schultz. We'll be able to speak. He'll, he'll, he'll be able to see it? The oh, clock? He, will he be able to see the clock? Um, Mr. Shulman, can you see the clock? Uh, I cannot see the clock. I see the, uh, the list of the appointments uh, for the LGBTQ commission. Uh, that's okay. I, can, I, I certainly can stay under three minutes. That's fine. We'll just try, uh, just try and work out the technology. So, so. Okay. I, glad to help in any way I can. Paul Schlick, uh, hi. Should I start? Not just, not just yet. We'll wait for Ashley. Or we, should we just go? Okay. Okay. Well, I, I, I guess so. I'm trying right. to figure out where, what he can see. What he can't see. All right. I think he's seeing this, but. Yeah, I'm seeing, see I'm seeing the, the, the appointments too, so, so, so. Oh, I see a teeny tiny clock, uh, clock in my upper right corner. Uh, that says 119 right now. Can you see this? No, I can't see it. Right. I'm oh, okay. still looking at your, your, your roll call on the LGBTQ appointments. Hmm. All right. Well, we'll just keep working on it. So, so we'll, we'll go, go ahead and get started, Mr. Schlickman. So we have three minutes and 10 seconds. I, I'll, I'll give back, I'll yield back the 10 seconds. Uh, Paul <laughs> Schlickman speaking as a uh, <clears throat> town meeting member from Precinct 9. Uh, on December 31st, 2019, a uh, 1,002 days ago, my downstairs neighbor was struck and killed on the crosswalk on Chestnut Terrace. Uh, last year's move towards improvements were delayed through December and into, the, into this year because the, uh, the town was unable to send attachments to DPW, uh, to the state uh, uh, Mass Highway and didn't do a follow-up, uh, if you recall that incident. So this year, uh, things that were promised have not yet been delivered, including restriping uh, Chestnut Street and a uh, flashing beacon at the uh, Chestnut Terrace crosswalk. And I want to quote to you uh, the words of former town manager Adam Chapeline that he wrote to me in an email on December 16th. I now see the lack of clarity in the matter. The installation of the RRFB, the rectangular flashing beacon, will go, will go forward next construction season as part of the implementation of the other permanent improvements. It will not be contingent on further analysis. So we had a solid promise and a commitment of delivery uh, of safety improvements on Chestnut Street which the town has not done at this point. So I would like to ask that the select board place on the agenda for their next meeting a full report on the status of Chestnut Street and to urge the uh, appropriate departments uh, through your town manager to view this as a very high priority because on December 31st of 2022, we will reach a three year anniversary of this tragic death. And to have no substantive progress on the uh, improvements that you adopted in June of 2021 uh, would, would be a, a real shame and, and really puts the town in a very poor light. So please put this on, uh, on the agenda, put, make this a high priority, give us regular reports and get this work done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chaplin. So next we have Trey.
Good evening. Uh, good evening, Elizabeth Dre, uh, town meeting member in precinct 10. Um, I wanted to thank Ms. Cody for the budget explanation and all that work. Um, I just wanted to bring up one thing that I had noted and voice some concern about the overtime budgets um, that seem to be well over the appropriated funds. So that at the inspection department, their overtime was 106% over the appropriated fund. The fire department was 61% over and the police department was 57% over. Uh, I know that is an ongoing problem and I'm just wondering what are these departments doing specifically to prevent you know, this continued issue, especially as we face a huge override, um, just to cover basic services. And uh, also, I would love to learn in the police department um, budget, there was a category called other purchases, and that was 159% over budget. I would be wond I'm wondering if there's a place that I could find out what that was actually spent on. Um, and again, you know, this, I know overtime is hard and I know it's hard to figure out and I know it's hard to budget, but this is consistently a place where um, our, the costs are well over what we appropriate for them. And I am wondering what tangible actions these departments are doing to control that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, with that, uh, we will now move on to item number yeah. Yeah. You know, so uh, discussion filling the vacancy on the board of registers. You know, so see Ms. Rizal is here, uh, our town clerk. Hi. Uh, good evening. Um, so I, if you would like, I can give you just a quick update. I was able to speak with the chairman of the Republican Town Committee this afternoon. And he does have a name that he can forward to the select board um, uh, to make an appointment um, at your next meeting, ideally. Great. So I guess all you have to do is put it on the agenda, right? And then it happens. That's, it's wonderful how it all comes together, yes. <laughs> nice. Hey, so, so um, well, I guess we can keep this short and really mm -hmm. sweet unless someone wants to say something, in which case it'll still be short, but all right. And so uh, we'll hear from from them at some point, hopefully before uh, before the election. Right. That's the goal is to have this all settled by the, by the election. Right? Oh, I'm sh yeah, I'm sure you'll have the name uh, this week. So okay. not a problem. Great. All righty. Well, have a good night. Thank you very much. You stay around, of course, but, but <laughs> <laughs> is it for you on the Have a good night. night. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll move on to item number 11, um, or the correspondence received section. So we have uh, Arlington Community Electricity Contract Updates um, by Mr. Pooler, Town Manager, and comments for the intersection at Park Ave and Route 2 Frontage Roads by Petru Sofio, Elmore Street. Elmore Street. Seat. And motion by Mr. Hurd. Second. And second by Ms. Mahan. Um, yes. Um, this will sort of take care of some. I think that's the contract clause. Oh, is it? Yeah. Popcorn's ready. Yeah. Gotta go get it. Um, one of my um, questions yeah. under new business, which Sorry. is here under correspondence received, and I don't know if the town manager. Um, either tonight or <clears throat> in the future could give a, a quick brief sort of update uh, to the community. People have been asking me since um, National Grid is projecting somewhere in the 50% increase and Eversource is predict predicting somewhere 60, 66% increase. Uh, people were asking me um, about the town's um, electricity company would they be, and, and some of that is in, in correspondence received in, encapsulated, but could you just um, sort of not read it word for word, but just give sort of a brief update on that, if that's all right, Mr. Sure, Chair? Sure, sure. That was one of my new business, we'll take care of it. I'd, I'd be happy to, I think it's an excellent question. Um, we, uh, so as the letter says, and just for the people at home, um, we are starting a new contract, uh, a new two-year contract in November, 
for the electricity that people can buy through our municipal aggregation, our ACE program. Um, there are several tiers of how green you can get that. Um, there will be an increase in those rates, but because we bought electricity back in um, the spring and locked in rates before things really went out of hand, um, uh, we are pretty confident that those rates will continue to look as attractive as they have in the past. Uh, we've saved on the order of $5 million to uh, ratepayers in Arlington through this program to date. Um, and I am obligated to say that past savings do not guarantee future savings. <laughs> Understanding that, uh, we will know Eversource's new rates in, also in November. That's when they go out. Uh, we have seen that National Grid just did uh, go out and renewed their rates. We don't have National Grid for electricity. We, we have them for gas, but not for electricity. Their increase was 62 percent, uh, which I think reflects the fact that energy markets all around the globe are much, much higher than they have been. Um, so uh, I, again, I won't predict what Eversource is going to do in, uh, in the next month when they buy electricity, um, but uh, I am just aware that the market is a lot higher than it was when we bought electricity back in the spring. Uh, so we are sending that mailer out to all the people who get electricity through our aggregation program, through the AIDS program. Um, and uh, allow them to, if they don't want to change, they will just continue on the program. If they want to change their level of greenness, they can do that. Um, and, um, and I think we will continue to offer a very competitive, um, and I uh, would hope, um, cost-saving program to people going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, So, yes, Mr. Hurd. I mean, Mr. Allen. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate Ms. Ms. Mahan uh, inviting the opportunity to, to, to talk more about this. I think it's really important. And, um, you know, I think this may be an opportunity. If, if Eversource comes in with significantly higher rates, this may make the ACE program uh, more attractive to more, to more people and may provide an incentive for people to go higher on the, on the scale. So I'm really grateful, Mr. Manager, to, uh, to the team. Uh, who, who responded to the select board's urging of being as aggressive as possible with the, with the default rate of percentage of re renewables, I believe is now 30%, which is what a lot of uh, advocates were really urging us to do. I want to specifically, I know you were involved, our former town manager was involved, uh, Ms. Talia Fox, our sustainability manager, has been doing outstanding work, uh, and I want to give her some credit for that as well, for not only putting this together, but really communicating this and working with community advocates so it's one of the best things about Arlington. I'm so proud of what we have done for sustainability, and this is just a real win, and I didn't want the moment to pass without communicating that. And as you pointed out in the letter, too, that we, we had asked for, I think, just three categories, but that we did end up with that fourth category because uh, I guess the suit or ruling of in Fitchburg mean that um, yeah, the I guess DPU said that they really needed to have that fourth category, otherwise they would be dropped from the program and would have to get back in, and, and there was concern that they would come back in. There, yeah. So that's understood. Yes, there, there, if we made any changes to our tiers, we would have been required to make people re-enroll. Right. And instead of doing that, uh, for the time being, we're keeping the tiers we had. Uh, there is some speculation that the DPU may change their view on that issue going forward, but for the time being, uh, we're just keeping the tiers as we've had them, uh, had them all along, uh, which offer a lot of great green ways to save. Right, right. And, and you did also mention that you're going to send the letter out, and, and I don't know what's appropriate to put in the letter beyond just the, what has happened, okay, but I did notice that for those at 100%, it's two cents higher, you know, and and I, if it's 
appropriate to just express appreciation be for the fact that the, those folks are going 100 percent and that it really does make a difference I mean, um, to, to um, our goal I mean, to help with the clean energy and, and a better environment so I suggest I just put it out there as an idea you know because uh, sometimes just telling people thank you goes a long way you know uh, saying if it doesn't cost too much to do that uh, that's all so so on a motion by Mr. Hurd and a second by Ms. Mahat. Oh, one other thing. Uh, the letter from Petru, let's send that to TAC. You know, uh, uh, so on a motion by Mr. Hurd and a second by Ms. Mahat. Mr. Hurd? Mr. Hurd? Mr. Yes. Mr. Corsi. Yes. 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 Mr. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Dickens. Yes. It's your hands <coughs> so I think it's safe to assume we don't need a second open mm -hmm. forum, you know, so we'll move on to new business. Uh, Ms. Mai? No new business, thank you. Ms. Okay. Hyde? No new business, thank you. Mr. Poehler? No new business, thank you. Mr. Corsi? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just briefly, for, for the board's benefit, uh, we are going to have a meeting this Friday morning of the Long Range Planning Committee. It's the first one this fall. Um, Mr. Pooler and, and um, we'll be presenting new revenue estimates and we'll have our first discussion with the representatives of the FinCom and uh, school committee. And uh, I would imagine in October we may, may talk to you about uh, putting an agenda item on to start talking about where we go all, over the next year. But that, that's going to be this Friday at 8. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I'll try to be really brief. Um, received communication on the um, nineteen dollars to $25,000 um, uh, Save the Alwife Brook grant through the DCR. Um, it seems like the, the clock is now kind of ticking on that in terms of, you know, where those monies might come from. Um, I, I, I hate to lose this opportunity, so if you all <clears throat> were asking me, and I'm, I'm hoping we can make it happen, and I think a decision needs to be made sooner rather than later, I'd point to the surplus in free cash for the 19 to 25,000, perhaps the municipal building trust fund, and or anything else. I don't know if um, that's something the manager wants to. I don't mean to put you on the spot, or you want to get, get back to us on that, or? No, if I may. Yes. Okay. Um, sure. So uh, we have we are in receipt of a state grant of forty six some thousand dollars, uh, twenty five thousand dollars of which we can use toward this um, DCR study of the Alewife Brook, uh, which matching with the other money that is out there is basically going to be our contribution. So we've been working with them on the specifics of what they're going to um, study, but. Uh, the last I spoke with, it was uh, David Morgan and Wayne Chenard who were moving forward to get that done. Uh, it's my understanding that we are going to do those studies, and um, so what I will do is double check on the progress of that and uh, report back to the board. Okay, and what I will do is, I just was playing catch up, skimming my email. Mm -hmm. I did see an email with a subject line from Gwen Spieth. I have not opened it up. And what I'll do is I'll forward it to the town manager tomorrow morning, if not tonight, as well as the select board office and ask it, them to forward to my colleagues as an FYI. Um, and, and the email may, I haven't read the body of it, it may say, um, thanks, you've identified it, you know, we're going to get the matching 50, but the subject line seemed to, but I haven't read it, so I'll make sure I do that. Um, as we get into November, um, and we touched on it very briefly, and we don't necessarily, I don't want, can't have any specifics tonight with the um, electricity rates and projected with um, Eversource. Um, the, and the town has done a, an exemplary job um, through Health and Human Services or through the planning department for, you know, when we hit the winter months, people need, you know, we have a program for um, various utilities. Um, uh, moving forward with the projected increased costs, at least by um, that I'm aware of, that have been sort of put out there, stated by Eversource and, and um, National Grid, as well as I don't anticipate this getting done until um, the culmination of midterm elections, but it could, because you never know. I know the um, 
Senate and House uh, down in Washington are talking of uh, um, and maybe the president proposing or, or, or a subcommittee, someone from the Senate of the House, two to three hundred billion dollars for this anticipated increased utility costs in the upcoming winter <coughs> season. Um, and I expect that if and when that does go through, and it seems like it may, um, although you don't know it's Senator Manchin and him not getting something else, but that's all. And But I, uh, I just would ask come November, whatever opportunities we can give to residents. Um, and if there's businesses, I anticipate if we did get federal funding, it would be similar to a CARES Act um, allocation, uh, which would go through the uh, planning department and the CDB subcommittee and, and, the, and the town manager, but if for some reason that does not come through, if the board could just be provided and or reminded of um, what is available through Health and Human Services and or um, the planning department, because I anticipate we're, we're going to be get, getting that. Um, you already did that, I can take care of that tomorrow. And then I, once again, I would just put a, uh, plug in and I know I've had conversations with the manager and um, with uh, Mr. DeCourcy I'd love to have with the rest of the board but that would violate the open meeting law. Um, still getting questions and I believe there are still uh, conversations in Zoom and or in-person meetings regarding the, uh, num the retirees and COVID pay reimbursement. I believe to date uh, everybody else uh, in, including department heads um, have, uh, as well as town employees, um, union employees, have um, received money from that, from the, I think it's 33.7 or 34.7 million opera funding. But um, I kind of feel like we're sort of penalizing our very small pool of retirees, and I'm, I'm, I'm putting the school side aside because my hat's just for um, the town side. Um, I know they're still waiting for an answer on, the, on that. So I would just ask through the, chair to the, through the chair to the town manager when it is appropriate because I know this is something that hasn't fallen by the wayside. I know there's been communication, but I'd, I'd kind of like to get that resolved. And I just want to say I'd be very disappointed if for some reason we found a way for everybody else but um, the retirees who and I want to make sure they legitimately, which they did, worked during COVID, um, they're entitled to also get that benefit. So I'm not looking for a discussion on that. I just want to put it out. And that's it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. Yeah. Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to follow up on our very successful town day, helped by probably just about the best weather that you could ask for for town day so the results aren't always typical but you know it was a combination of a ton of work a lot of people in this room the chair led the way and uh with kathleen darcy from Cambridge savings bank bob bows um jeff from acmi too many people to name but it was really a, a team effort and it was a lot of work and we were warned, but it turned out to be an excellent day. I think it was clear from the attendance that the residents of the town wanted us to have town day and we'll have it going forward. We have already had set our meeting for next year's town day and we've kind of looked at this town day to see if there were any improvements, what we did right and where we can have room for improvement on timing and whatnot. But again, it was very successful. I was down there at five o'clock and I think Jim Feeney was probably there for about 30 minutes at that time, working away, so he put me to shame. But um, a lot of work, the DPW, police department, fire department, too many to name, but again, but it was a fun day. Everyone that I know was very thankful that we brought Tom Day back and everyone that was there had, had a great time, so. Thank you all who participated and came to town day this year. Mr. Hellman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hurd, Mr. Diggins, and all the people you just mentioned. Uh, I, was, I had a great time at town day, and I had a great time watching thousands of people have a great time. It was a joy to see it back. 
Um, and I am really grateful for your vision, your persistence, and your really hard work, all of you who made that happen for our community once again. Um, my only new business is to suggest some new business um, to the chair, um, and that is kind of to expand upon Mr. Schlickman's suggestion in open forum. I think it, it could be, I would appreciate uh, an update from the manager and whatever staffing seems appropriate on the, pro on the progress, not only of that project, but on the, any other major uh, transportation or road safety projects that we have at various stages in the harbor. I know that we, our work is commencing on Mass Ave and Appleton with respect to funding and plans. Uh, an update on that might be beneficial. And there may be things I'm not thinking about, but maybe uh, some, something like that uh, that could dovetail with um, a, a top level report from TAC on kind of how, how things are going. Um, I leave that to, to you all in your capable hands, but uh, I think that I, I would appreciate that. And if Mr. Chair, if you feel like that would be worth the board's time, I would welcome that on the agenda in the near future. Thank you. you know, so, my new business, is, well, I was uh, going to comment on Town Day 2, but Mr. Hurd did mention Mr. Feeney. He, uh, a couple of times, you know, so, and, and he was very um, instrumental um, in, in uh, making things happen. And I also want to say that I got involved uh, because I know that the select board staff uh, was pretty stretched to me then. So I wanted to help out in, in that realm as much as I could. And as much as I did, I also know that the select board staff still did a lot of work, you know, and when I had questions about what to do because I hadn't done it before. I had this master spreadsheet, but still there were some things that I didn't understand. They, they were always very helpful and very gracious in answering the questions and helping to, to advance things. And I know in those last few weeks, I mean, they, they were doing a, a lot of work. And, and, um, and Fran Reedy. Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> she, she, she came back. Uh, um, oh, and and, and she, did, she did a lot of work, and we are rewarding her as we did with Kathleen. Ten bucks for each year. She did 15 years, and as I said, in, at Town Day, you know, the, even a thousand dollars a year wouldn't really compensate them for the work that they did. I mean, but, but we just want, want to express our appreciation in some tangible way. I mean, so that's coming her way, I mean, and so yeah, and I actually got to know Fran um, more through that than I had you know, um, for my one year on the select board while she was on it. Um, while I was on it with with her. Uh, so, so yeah, and I was expecting Mr. Hurd to tell us what the date for next year is. The 23rd. Did he tell us that? I don't recall. Uh, <laughs> 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, uh, it'll be the biggest birthday Which is party also your ever. birthday, Mr. Hard. As long as there's a big cake at the center stage, I'll be happy. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Which you will pop out of. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 you set it up. You set it up. <laughs> Sorry. You know. and, uh, and also Mr. Hard's idea about having the fireworks on Saturday night, I think, was a, a really good idea. <coughs> it was nice to kind of see the evening culminate with that. And, and, uh, and, and the nice thing about the fireworks, I think, in Arlington is that you can kind of see it from most places. In Arlington, you know, I live in East, which is pretty flat, but I, mean, I can see them. I think for those who live in the hillier areas, you can you can kind of see it. So I thought it was just a nice way to talk to, to end the night. And the football players and cheerleaders and parents were very grateful because every Friday night they miss right. it. They yeah. have to be in a game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so right. they they were thumbs up on that. Right. So all around good, you know. And uh, so uh, yeah, uh, my only other piece of new business is that. I am planning on I'm reaching out to the Public Memorials Committee and on my own to just try to understand the, the basics about how the committee works before advancing more items to them. You know, um, and so, um, so just to let you know that I'm working on that and then, and then we will decide what we send to them um, from the town meeting or any other uh, source. So, so, there's that, yeah, and I think that's it for me. Move to adjourn. Second. So on a motion to adjourn, Mr. Hine, and second by Mr. Hurd. Mr. Hine. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCrossi. Yes. Mr. Hellman. Yes. Mr. Hine. Yes. Mr. Davis. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Chairman.